I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's word to you today, which is the last day of the month of June, and which ends the first half of the year 2023. Praise God. So from tonight, we are marching into the month of July, which begins the second half of the year. Now, let me tell you this truth. It doesn't matter how the first half has been. You have an opportunity now to begin afresh, to redeem the first half. And if you have won in the first half, you have an opportunity to solidify or to increase your winning. So there is no going down for you. If you were down, you're not going further down. You're coming up. This is like a football team. They give them the half time to go re-strategize. So whether you were losing or you were winning in the first half, when you come back at the second half, you're coming back refreshed. Don't carry the mentality of, of, of lose, losing that you ended the first half with into the second half. No, brothers and sisters. God set these timings for you to regain and redeem the time. So that's why he created day and night. He created weeks. He created months. All those points are points of return for you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? I don't know what you're expecting today, but I'm expecting massive miracles today. Praise God. I'm, I'm expectant. Not just for myself, I'm also expecting for you. Are you ready? Trust the Lord with me now as we make this demand. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. I believe and I receive miracles of provision today. Financial miracle. The promotion I'm expecting, I receive it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes when we when we pray like this, you know, whenever I, I, I sit down to bring this broadcast, you know, it's it's on me to maintain the focus. But sometimes the Spirit of God comes with such a compelling um, force that you just have to yield to him. But see, once you start praying, the Lord begins to show you different things, begins to show you different angles. Now, whether I say it or I don't say it, doesn't change the fact that he is doing something. But sometimes we, we try to say it so that the person hearing will now have faith that the word of God is coming now. Are you, are you hearing me? Now, that's how it works. You know, like while, while we're praying just now, I saw a fair lady, you're, you're fair, and I saw you sitting down, and what's bothering you right now is the promotion you were supposed to have gotten, and you were wondering what's going on, that there's supposed to be a promotion somewhere, but you're in a confused state right now, I, I see you fair with, with long black hair, you know, and, and, and you're just wondering what's going on. But I heard the Lord say, the promotion is coming in this month. You will see it. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, blessed be your holy name. All right, so we are talking about Eli Kabayaba. Now, remember, tonight we are having our prayer and fasting meeting beginning tonight, 12 midnight. The, the Zoom information is on your screen. Don't miss it. Set your alarm plan to be in this meeting it's going to be an anointed pact and a meeting packed with god's anointing thank you holy spirit thank you lord jesus oh we give you praise lord the lord is doing a lot a lot but hey let's let's continue what i was sharing with you yesterday because you need this thank you holy spirit you need this. He says, if you will hear his voice 
now, today. When he said today, he's not talking about the 30th of June, today. He's talking about today, right now, this moment, in this situation. Now, a lot of God's children find themselves in, 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 in terrible situations that sometimes it's confusing to think of it. But you see, your life is not supposed to be guided by the challenges that you face. Every challenge you face gives you an opportunity to hear the voice of God. I was telling you earlier, God puts times and seasons for a reason. It's not like he couldn't have let one day run forever. But he put times and seasons for a reason. And that's the same reason we have challenges. That's the same reason we have hills and valleys. Those things were not a mistake. They were all an opportunity for you to re-examine yourself, to turn around, to repent, I hear what I'm saying. So when you face a challenge, it's not to just say, what nonsense is this? I'm not doing it again. No, 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 no. Evaluate yourself. Why was I here in the first place? Where was I going to? And, and then now this challenge, what do I do with this challenge? How do I overcome this challenge? Is this, is this a sign that I'm on the wrong path? Is this a sign that I need to wake up? Sometimes those challenges come to remind you to pray. Yes. Now, why do you pray? You pray so that you can be in tune to hear God. So you see, everything we do, and that, that's why, you know, the day before yesterday, I think I, I, I gave a word to pastors. And this is the same reason sometimes you know, we, we, we love to inspire people to do righteousness. We love to inspire people to pray. We love to inspire people to seek God. We love to, but see, the main focus of those inspiration, the main focus of all that teaching is that people will hear the voice of God. Everything we do in ministry is for people to hear the voice of God. So if we don't see the results, of people, if you're a pastor, for example, the result of your ministry, the result of your message is this one thing, that they hear the voice of God. So why do I preach the mind of God all through our messages? I, 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 my, my main concern is to give you God's perspective. You know the reason? The reason is so that when the Lord begins to speak to you, you'll be able to recognize it. You'll be able to recognize him. So when he's telling you something, he's like, mm, this sounds like what Pastor George was sharing. Oh, yeah. Now I understand. See? So I'm just preparing you for this one thing that you will hear and understand his voice. Samuel was hearing the voice of God, even though he did not know God. He had not had an encounter with God. So here was this little boy having an encounter with God and didn't know. Now, have you ever thought about it? Imagine if Eli was a wicked man and when he came to him, say, look, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing my name. And it looks like you're the one calling me now. Eli knew he wasn't calling the boy. But then when the boy kept insisting that he's hearing a voice, he knew this boy was not a fool. If he's hearing a voice, it means someone is speaking to him. So imagine if Eli had told him that, ah, that's the devil. Ignore that voice. Samuel would have gone the wrong way. But thank God for the counsel Eli gave to him. Eli told him, the next time you hear that voice, respond like this. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, how did Eli know that it was the Lord that was speaking to him? There was nothing to examine in the statement. All the voice was saying was, Samuel, Samuel. 
So have you ever thought about it? How did Eli know that the word of God was what was coming to Samuel? I'll tell you how he knew. Eli himself was a man of God. Even though the Bible has said the word of God was scarce in that season, the reason was because people were not paying attention to God anymore. But Eli was a priest and a man of God. So he had a witness in his spirit. And I believe it was the Lord that, have, that told Eli what to tell Samuel. I believe so. Because the, the response, the teaching Eli gave to Samuel, so he would respond to the voice he was hearing, was a complete... If you examine that statement, you know, it's so amazing that Samuel's mother had dedicated Samuel over to the Lord, right? So it meant that God owned Samuel. She, she, she said it before she conceived that if God gives her a male child, she's going to give him back to God. So she just said, Lord, use my womb to bring forth a male child for yourself. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And, and God heed her voice and gave her a male child. And true to her words, she brought him back. She said, Lord, the vow I made to you, here is it. You can have the boy. Now, don't think that was an easy decision to make. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. But because she made it. Now, here's the point. Samuel from that day was now living with Eli, Eli in the temple. And he was doing all the work of the temple. And God came to him. He didn't come to him to say, look, I've come to take claim my property. No, but he came because this boy was dedicated to him. So God came and God began calling his name, Samuel, Samuel. He was hearing, meaning God could have gone on to speak to him. Because the same way he was hearing Samuel, Samuel, he could have heard, look, don't go to Eli, stay here, let me talk to you. But there was something God needed from him. And what is that? Even though your mother have dedicated you to me, I need you to show willingness to walk with me. You need to open your own mouth and submit yourself to me. So when he was running to Eli, Eli now told him by the wisdom of God, this is how you should respond. And what was the response? I will take note of this statement. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That statement threw somewhere right into the work of the ministry. Praise God. He says, speak, Lord. So he acknowledged God, the voice, as the Lord. Now that's when he said, you know, when he said, Lord, it means you have authority over me. Then he now said, for your servant, meaning I'm ready to do anything you tell me to do. I'm yours to command. Praise God. And, and God started using him as his servant right immediately. He didn't spare him at all. Praise God. But you see, God waited for him to willingly accept. Because even after Samuel had given him that instruction, he could have gone and said, speak, Lord, Lord. Why would he call Lord to a voice that I don't know? No, I won't say Lord. Then your servant. Do I want to be a servant? Look, I've been cleaning temple. Servant, servant. Now, no, 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 no. Speak, voice. I'm listening. He could have done that. But he obeyed what the instruction he was given. And when God spoke again, he said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's the same thing he is telling you today. Now look at something in Psalm 95. Quickly, quickly, our time is running out. But I need to share this with you. Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 95. Hey, look at verse 7. 
verse 7. I want you to see this. It says, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hands. Wow. He is our God. We are the people of his pasture. We are the sheep of his hand. So we are his sheep. He is our shepherd. What did Jesus say in John chapter 10 and verse 27? My sheep hear my voice. Are you seeing that now? So because we are his pasture, he is our God. He will speak to us. Did you get that? He would speak to us. So the problem is not God speaking. The problem is, are you hearing him? Hearing him just means submitting to him. Today, if you will hear that voice, I want to teach you and instruct you the same way Ella instructed Samuel. Many times you have heard that voice and you have gone, my mind was telling me. Or sometimes you have gone, something was telling me. But let me tell you this truth today. He's going to speak to you again. And that's the reason for this message. He's going to speak to you again. But how are you going to respond? Be smart. Lord, speak. I'm listening because I'm your servant. I'm willing to do anything you want me to do. If you will just show me exactly what you want me to do, I am ready and willing to do it. Brothers and sisters, to enter into God's rest, it is voice operated. His voice. The moment he speaks, that that's what faith is. Faith is the word of God. Faith is brought by, by the voice of God. Romans 10 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now, actually, that scripture reads, faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of God. Faith comes from the voice of God. If the voice of God doesn't come, faith hasn't come. Now, that's where a lot of believers think they had faith, but they didn't have faith because of, they didn't listen for the voice of God. But as for God, faithful is he that have called you. And so even right now, he is speaking. He is speaking. He is telling you dry bones can rise again. He is telling you that situation is going to change. He is telling you you're not going to end up like this. He is telling you. No, he is telling you. It doesn't matter how tough it is. It doesn't matter how tough the situation has been. It doesn't matter. Maybe doctors have written it off. But that's them. That's doctors. They're only doing their job. And you see, except the doctors who too will listen for his voice. Because he speaks to even doctors. You do your medical things, but then you too should be able to hear his voice. It doesn't matter if the lawyer has said, look, the case is over. There's nothing we can do about it. It doesn't matter if the professionals have told you this thing is impossible. The question is, would you hear his voice? If you will hear his voice, to bring you into that rest, he will speak to you. And if you will hear his voice and do not harden your heart, because sometimes you harden your heart by thinking, ah, I beg, I beg, I'm tired of all this faith thing. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of believing. I'm tired of praying. Have you thought so before? Remember what Peter said, I have thought all night, nevertheless. See that? Nevertheless, Peter started out by complaining. When Jesus said, cast your nets, he said, I have taught all night. But then he said, nevertheless, at your word now, I will do it again. So you see, Peter heard his voice. He did not harden his heart. Brothers and sisters, faith is coming to you again. When you hear, do not harden your hearts. I want to pray for you. Father, 
all this month I have thought about entering into your rest. Now I hand over everyone that have been listening to me to you. Precious Lord Jesus, without your voice, no man can step into this rest. So I ask that you take them as they have believed in your word in their hearts. Can you make your voice louder that they will hear you? And I pray that their hearts are conditioned not just to hear, but to obey you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's believe God together for tonight. We're starting our prayer and fasting meeting this night by 12. The information is on your screen. Please join us. I sense strongly in my heart there's going to be a strong anointing in that meeting. There's going to be lots of great manifestations of God's Spirit in that meeting. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing that strongly in my heart, so don't miss it. I'll see you by midnight. God bless you. Bye.